the screen share. All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Rakesha Godfrey, and clearly I need to put my phone back on Do Not Disturb. Um, this morning, I am going to talk about content marketing, and it is, um, we're going to cover a few things, and I'm going to uh, simultaneously broadcast it to the um, business group, but this is being broadcasted on my brand's page. So just give me one second. I'm gonna um, turn my phone back off. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and share this with um, our business group so everyone will be able to see it. So give me just a second. So I can do that. And I know it's pretty early, so happy Saturday. And thank you all for joining me. This is going to be a live class, but I'm also going to have the replay up on my website a little bit later. So if anybody comes in a little bit late and you're not able to join um, right away, then um you can always go back and watch so just give me a second let me see if i can share the broadcast and then i'll give everyone a few minutes to join to actually find it and then you can join so we can get started i don't expect this class to last any longer than about 45 minutes um i actually hope that it doesn't go over because i have so much stuff to do Today, I don't know about y'all, but on Saturdays, I run errands. And so um, Saturday is the day that I run most of my errands. So even if I could have done it on um, a different day, I will save it for Saturday. So one second. Saturday is the day that I run most of my errands. So even if. All right. All right, so this is the first time that we're trying it this way as opposed to doing several different live videos. Um, so you guys are gonna be the testers. All right, so um, I'll give everyone a few minutes to get started before I just jump right in. Um, so as you all join, just you know, say hey. Let me know where you're where you're joining from, and then we'll just go from there. So, I would be hoarse today of all days, and right now of all times. All right. in a group. There we go. Okay, now let's try it. Okay. All right, so, okay. All right, so I'll just go ahead and get started. Oh, I wanna make sure, because I think I muted it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get started and then whoever decides to join, they can join and there's gonna be a replay, so, um, Anybody that misses it, it'll still be here. All right, so today I wanted to um, talk about um, content marketing because a lot of times, and the reason I created this class and also the corresponding workbook is because by far one of the main questions I get asked um, through my consulting firm is 
how do I connect with people? How do I increase my sales? How do I get people to interact with me? Um, how do I, uh, like, what should I send when I send my emails? How can I get people to read my emails? How can I get people to recognize my brand? Like, it's all about those types of things. And the first answer that I usually provide is that I believe people should start using content marketing. And so, of course, it's a fairly new concept, but it's something that I swear by myself. And so, um, what is content marketing? So content marketing is a concept of branding yourself and marketing yourself and or your business in such a way that you are centered around content that is relevant to your business versus just like a sell, sell, sell approach. And so with content marketing, the concept is that when you're communicating with your clients, 80% of your um, posts, 80% of your emails should be about relevant content, which is content that is relevant to your brand. And the other 20% should be sales. So if you break that down and say, well, for every 10 posts that you make on your Facebook page, every 10 emails that you send, every 10 posts that you make on Instagram, eight of those posts should not contain a hard sell. So what that means is, you would just share something that's relevant that your audience cares about and not necessarily something that you want them to buy. So for example, if you are a realtor or a real estate agent or a real estate investor and you're trying to get people to um, buy houses or whatever, your content marketing strategy might involve something like educating people on the process of buying a house or educating people on how to fix their credit or educating homeowners on how they can save um, during the closing process and things like that. So you could approach growing your brand and your business as educating the consumer because the, the idea is, is if you connect with your consumer on another level, that's not give me all your money, if you connect with them on a level that's, hey, I thought this might be interesting to you, and you know it's a great conversation piece and or whatever, um, then that's something that your client will be able to refer to you about, and it will establish you as a subject matter expert in such a way that they will think of you when they think of something that they need. So in the example of a real estate agent, they will think of you because you have taught them how to build their credit, what they can expect when it's time to buy a house, how they can find out how much house they can afford, you know, what the process is like in terms of even getting a real estate agent or if, like what the pros and cons are of getting a real estate agent. And so by the time you get to, you know, use me when it's time to buy a house, then that would be something that they would come to you for because they're like, well, she knows everything else. So of course she's gonna know about buying a house. And so that's pretty much um, the gist of content marketing. So today, um, our agenda is we're, we're going to talk about content marketing pretty briefly, and then I'll go over some tips for creating a monthly content guide and also um, a content planner. And so um, if you want to connect with me, I am on Facebook, Instagram. My Instagram is Rakesha ESQ. So my name, my first name, ESQ. You can follow me here on Facebook. You can either follow this page or you can follow my personal page. It's totally up to you. Um, I am also the owner of Buy Keeks with Love, which is an apparel company. I am on Etsy. Buy Keeks with Love is the Etsy shop name. And then I also have a standalone site, which is www.buykeekswithlove.com. So content marketing 101, it, um, content marketing is a way that you can connect with your target audience beyond your sales pitch. And so we already went over content marketing. So how do you get started? So in order to get started with content marketing, there's three steps. And I wanted to share my screen because I think it makes more sense. <laughs> if y'all could actually see what I'm talking about, but maybe i'll have to like re-record it on zoom and repost it and maybe it'll make sense but i wanted to be able to show you all like what it's like when you're when you're getting started with content marketing and like how you can actually apply it 
to your everyday marketing strategy. So I might have to re-record this, but I appreciate y'all joining me today anyway. It's like trial and error, so it's totally okay. All right, so there's three steps to getting started. The first step is you want to evaluate your existing co content. So that means you want to check all of your sales channels to make sure that your brand message is clear. That also means you have to look through all your social media accounts and consider archiving content that doesn't fit your message. So for example, if before today, your entire Instagram feed is like, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, you could go in, archive all of those posts, which would actually add to your social media clout because you don't wanna have more posts than you have followers. So anytime I have a client who has like 900 followers and they have like 3,700 posts, uh-uh. You got to go and you got to like go delete some of that stuff because the way social media works is that you should get new followers every single time you post. So if you're not getting new followers to the point where you have 3,700 posts and you have 900 followers, that's a problem. So that's what I mean by evaluating your existing content. If your existing content is not getting you followers every single time that you post, then you need to evaluate it and try to switch up your strategy. The next thing is you need to get in your mind that you're going to only be able to conquer one major goal at a time. So content marketing can help you increase brand awareness, grow your audience, and increase revenue. As you're fine tuning your plan, it's important to focus on one of those goals at a time. And that doesn't mean like one of those goals for an extended period of time. Maybe it means, okay, this week I'm going to focus on increasing brand awareness. Or maybe today I'm going to focus on increasing brand awareness. Tomorrow I'm going to focus on growing my audience. But the thing is like with every single post, you should try to narrow it down to one goal. That way you know what your voice is going to sound like. And by voice, I don't mean like, my voice i mean like how you're going to communicate with your audience because your your tone would be a little bit different based on what your goal is and that's just anything in life like if you're going to ask for something that you might not think you're going to get your approach to it might be a little bit different in real life than if you're just asking for something that you know it's pretty easy to get so I, and that maybe that's just me but like if i'm gonna ask my parents for like a large amount of money my tone and my and my approach is a little bit different than if i'm just saying hey can you go by the store and grab me something to eat so it's kind of the same concept like your tone and your pitch and your approach is going to be a little bit different based on whatever goal it is you have for that post and the third thing and it's my huge thing and i have been slacking myself so do as I say, not as I do, is to pre-plan your content. And that means that, um, and I developed some content planner sheets and also some, um, with our content planner workbook, there are content planner sheets there, which are designed to help you go through the month and to have the discipline to sit down. And it looks like this, by the way. So this is a content planner sheet and I have one for every month. Of course, this one is blank because like I said, I've been slacking, but today I'm gonna get back on my, my ball. Um, you have your content planner sheet. So what that means is you would plan ahead. And so like now, usually I have mine done by the last, the first day of the last week of the month. So for August, um, what you would do is if you're planning for August, you would check to see like what events are coming up in August, what celebrations are coming up, whatever things that are relevant to your audience, that's what you would plan. So that way you can write it down here or, you know, you can create your own. You don't absolutely have to, have to use mine, but I just find it useful to sit down and to set that time aside, just like you set time aside for accounting and everything else, you would need to set time aside for your content. And that means you would take, think about important dates. Like if there's a movie that's coming out, like Black Panther, I know my audience probably got sick of me in Black Panther because like from January until February 16th when it was released and then for like a month after, I was like Black Panther, Black Panther, Black Panther because it introduced me to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and like the whole nine yards. So I was like, all my content was Black Panther. All my new releases were about Wakanda and all that stuff. So if it's something like that, because my, my 
brand for my apparel is like black empowerment. And so Black Panther was really relevant to my audience because it was like an incredible cinematic experience. So leading up to it, it was all Black Panther. And then for a month after that, I think I kind of got away with it because Black Panther kept um, breaking all these records, like, oh, it crossed the $100 million mark and it like broke the record for how fast it did that. And then there was like all these different interviews with the cast. So it was like something that you could have really planned an entire month around an event like that. So if your audience is like really into stuff like that, that's something that you'd be able to connect with them on. So that's what you would list um, under your important dates, like the movie release, um, maybe some of their favorite actors or actresses' birthdays, um, like Leo season just started, I think it was on the 23rd. So if you have if you have a, an email list and you have asked them for their birthday, then you would, you know, send out an email, say, hey, happy birthday, Leo's, you know, here's a coupon or something, just to kind of keep your audience engaged and to connect with them beyond, you know, hey, buy something. It's like, hey, I heard you got a birthday coming up. Here's $5, something like that. Um, so that's why things like that matters is because you want your audience to connect with you beyond give me your money. So a content planner sheet is something that you would sit down, ideally every month, you could even sit down now and if you have our content workbook, um, you could really plan out the rest of the year, especially like now I'm planning for the holidays already. Some people will ask, you know, how soon should you start to plan? I'm already planning for the holidays. I already have an idea of how soon I want to start. I already have an idea of what, um, what sales I'm going to have, what products I'm going to offer, things like that. So it's never too early. And sometimes it can be too late. So that's what I usually tell people when they say, how soon can I start promoting X, Y, Z? And I'm like, well, what you could also do is to go in stores. Like now it's about to be August, but I'm seeing the Spirit Halloween stores pop up already. So when you think about it, like other retailers are also going to help you with um, getting your customers in the mind frame of buying different things so when you start when you start seeing as a consumer when you start seeing spirit halloween stores pop up those are that's like the temporary halloween superstore when you start seeing those that's also an indication that your clients are going to start seeing those too and so that's going to put them in the mind frame of okay halloween is coming so then you can start doing like pumpkin spice fall stuff whatever um and so that's the idea so it and Outside of craft stores, because I know Hobby Lobby has had Christmas trees. I don't even know if they put their Christmas trees away. So I wouldn't necessarily use craft stores as an example, but definitely like regular retail stores. And I say don't use craft stores because they tend to cater to us, which means that they understand that we have to get ready sooner than the clients have to get ready because we're the ones who have to make the wreaths, make the, the trees. I know the dress form trees are really popular in the craft community because we're the ones that have to do that. So we actually are catered to a little bit earlier for holidays than the consumer. But when you see stuff like the Spirit Halloween stores coming up and you know the Christmas movies are starting to, or the Thanksgiving movies and all that stuff is starting to be promoted, that's when you know it's a good time for you to start promoting as well. So if you have Halloween stuff, I know there's like the pumpkin spice. I don't get it, but I don't have to get it in order for people to buy pumpkin spice stuff. So if pumpkin spice is your thing, now is a good time to kind of start easing into it, especially if you live in a place where the climate changes um, noticeably. If it's like Florida, I think because I grew up in Florida, like that's why I don't get the whole fall thing because we don't really have a fall. It's kind of like rainy it's kind of like hurricane season in summer <laughs> that's all we get so we didn't I, growing up i didn't really like care about winter or fall or whatever because it was really like it's hot it's not hot that's our two seasons so that's pretty much what it was um hi pamela hi mia hi Lindsay. thank you all for joining pamela yes thank you for reminding me the content marketing workbook is available on my website it is at www.rakisha.com. And at the end of the presentation, I'm actually going to share a special coupon for you all um, so that you can get a, an extra discount. It's already on sale, but just 
as a thank you for putting up with me and letting me record my first broadcast, I will give you all a discount. Um, so moving on. So that's how you get started with content marketing. You do want to pre-plan your content. And also I want to make sure that you don't like keep your content plan rigid. You do want to have some flexibility. Like for example, when something goes viral, I remember there was, um, uh, congressional rep Maxine Waters. She was at, and it was actually like a year ago, I think, because I it was in my Facebook memories today. It was a year ago when she was at a congressional hearing, and uh, can't remember who was interviewing her because, of course, my mind is going blank right now. But that's when she kept saying, "I'm reclaiming my time. I do not yield not one second to you." And that was in July, and it was like, "Well, what the heck are people talking about?" on July 28th, like what holiday is July 28th? There's nothing going on. But the thing about content marketing is you can create your news. Like some people say, oh, it's a slow news day. I don't know what to write. It doesn't matter because you can create your own news. So when Maxine Waters went viral for reclaiming your time, for saying, I'm reclaiming my time, I'm reclaiming my time. I do not yield not one second to you. I was at work, but my friends tagged me in it. And they were like, yo, you have to do something about this. You have to say something about this. Like, she reminds me so much of you. You have to say something. And so that taught me that, like, you still do have to be flexible. Like, I still have my own content ready, but I canceled that email that was going out that day. And I, you better believe I went and designed a shirt real quick. I took a break. Um, I used to take my, my computer to work every day, my personal computer. And I took a break. I designed a shirt real quick, put it up on my website sent the email reclaim your time like my like auntie maxine bam i had the shirts i had the mugs i had the tanks and i think i did like baby onesies or something and it was like bananas some people did clocks some people did watches it was like crazy so you have to understand and keep in mind that you can still have your plan but sometimes it will change because we don't there's there's no i know that there are things working behind the scenes to help certain things go viral, but we don't necessarily have direct control over who goes viral and what becomes news day in and day out. So that's what I mean by stay flexible. So how can you use content marketing? So you can use content marketing to connect with your clients, to increase your engagement, to plan out content, it will help you increase your email open rates. You can create your brand strategy around the content. It'll help increase brand awareness, clarify your message, and of course, attract more followers. So how do you get started? The step one is to do your research. And what I mean by that is you need to figure out what your audience cares about. So for example, um, one of my clients had a natural hair, wait, I'm about to say this wrong, a natural hair t-shirt line. So all of our t-shirts had like little sayings about natural hair, like cocoa butter or whatever. I, I'm, I'm a lazy natural, so I really don't know all, of, all the products, but it was like coconut oil, shea butter, like all that kind of stuff. And all she was doing was just buy my shirts, buy my shirts, buy my shirts. That's not what it should be. It should be um, what I recommended for her was to kind of switch up her approach and figure out what a natural hair person would also care about like what is the likelihood that a natural hair person would care about a festival i think it was uh something in brooklyn clearly my mind is drawing a blank like i memorized this presentation and then my mind is drawing a blank but there was an event in brooklyn i think either this past weekend or weekend before last that is about natural hair so of course your people will want to know about that. And that will also translate into something like, if you have this natural hair t-shirt line, maybe you should try to be a vendor at an event that's like that. I know there's one called Curl Fest that I've been to, and that's in Fort Lauderdale. And I wanna say it's either this weekend or next weekend, but those are things that your clients will care about. And then it, it's also something that you should care about because that's likely where you could go and find them as a vendor. So you want to do your research and figure out what they care about. Like what types of celebrities do they support? Is it mostly women or is it mostly men? Like what, what types of things do they like? What types of things do they like to see? 
And don't be afraid to go look at your competition. Like if you have a natural hair t-shirt line, there's hundreds maybe. So I'm pretty sure you can go on Instagram and see what they're posting. And you can go to their website and see and sign up for their email list to see what kinds of emails they're sending. It's perfectly fine to do your market research and to have that include your competition. As long as you're not just copying their posts, like screenshotting their posts and be like, oh, they posted this, so I'm gonna go post this too. Like you still wanna have original content, but it will definitely give you an idea of you know what you should be posting and what your audience is used to because if they're your competition, that means that you guys probably have the same types of customers. And if they're getting high engagement on some of their posts, then you should also try to post some of the same things because you already know that's what your clients are used to. All right, so step two is find your voice. And what I mean by that is not your speaking voice. It is how you're going to communicate with your audience. Like, are you going to use profanity? Are you going to um, use your family in your pictures? Are you going to talk about mom life or um, what it's like to be a black woman or what it's like to be a student or whatever? You're going to want to find your voice, figure out how you're going to talk to your audience are you going to use lingo like yes and you know stuff like that or are you just going to keep it professional it really it really depends on your audience and i think a lot of people buy into the misconception that like this is what i want this is what i want to do that's perfectly fine but if you're if if it's not resonating with your audience it's not going to take you very far and I would guess that people start businesses because they at least want to go somewhere. Like I would guess that you wouldn't put all your heart and soul into a business to like be stagnant. And if you are, that's perfectly fine. Cause I know I was there when I first started, I was just like, Hey, if I sell 20 shirts a month and I'm still working, this is perfectly fine for me. I'm not trying to grow this. I'm not trying to be bigger than I am or whatever, but sometimes it's okay for your goals to change as well. All right, so step three is decide what really matters. And what I mean by that is decide what matters to your audience. So that means if there are certain topics that your audience is, is particularly concerned about, like for example, if your audience is immigrant families, then you might want to not necessarily get into the weeds, but to maybe um, speak on immigration issues or to share articles about um, immigration activists, immigration attorneys, um, what's going on with the immigration debate, just to help your audience to understand that not only are you um, trying to connect with them so that they can purchase from you, but you connect with them because you all care about the same issues. So that's the point in deciding what really matters to them. So if there's a Supreme Court case that comes out and you know, maybe because I'm a lawyer, like I watch that kind of stuff. If a Supreme Court case comes out that might impact um, some of some of my audience, then I will share it because and I know that some of my audience knows about cases because I have an entire line of um, like legal case shirts like Brown v. Board, Loving v. Virginia, Gideon v. Wainwright. And since I know that people buy them, usually people who purchase that type of stuff also is also concerned with what's going on in the highest court of the land. So you could, if you're trying to figure out what your audience cares about, you could also look at the things that they're buying from you. So if they're buying one particular shirt that has a message on it, like my last, last week, my best seller was, um, well, it was actually tied. It was a custom shirt I did for um, Florida State University's Black Student Union, and also a shirt that says white supremacy is terrorism. So to me, that tells me a lot about who my audience is. One, they're really bold. <laughs> they're really, really bold people. And two, they are black and proud, like so much so that we work together to create an entire new word for um, the Florida State University Black Student Union. We created a whole new word for their shirts that are gonna be for their, um, for their homecoming. So that tells me that one, my audience is pretty bold because you, you're sending the message out to the world without opening your mouth when you wear a certain t-shirt. And so you have to be pretty bold to wear something that says white supremacy is terrorism. Like, I feel like that's a pretty 
strong message to convey to the world and not everybody's gonna get it and not everybody's gonna like it but the kind of people that like that kind of stuff is also likely to care about you know social justice issues and things like that so that's how it that's how you can use your sales and you can also do polls with your audience like if you have an email list which we and uh, we did an email challenge in the last group i think i'm gonna have to do another one here but uh, the first couple of weeks of august is going to be touch and go for me because right now um i'm planning out everything and i think for the first two weeks of august is going to be touch and go but i'm pretty sure when we get back from our vacation um i'll have content for you all so going forward i'm going to try to at least have one class per week where I'm teaching you guys something. Um, so if there are any topics that you want to know about, just you know, let me know. And that's just an aside. I'll get back off my soapbox. All right. So step four: create your plan. What do you want to do to create your plan? You want to take all the things from step one, step two, step three. You want to figure out how you're going to talk to your people. You're going to figure out what they want you to talk about and you're gonna figure out what matters to them and you're gonna take all of that and you're going to create your plan. So for example, for August, the August celebrations are Black Business Month, it's Family Fun Month, it's National Golf Month, it's National Eye Exam Month, it's back to, National Back to School Month. Um, week one of August is Simplify Your Life Week. Week two is National Smile Week. Week three is Friendship Week, and week four is Be Kind to Humankind Week. August 23rd is when the Virgo Zodiac sun rises, um, and that lasts until September 22nd. So if you think about all of that stuff, it really encompasses a whole lot of different ideas that you can use in terms of content. So for example, um, I help my girlfriend, she's an optometrist, and they have um, an office and their, their office has an Instagram. Well, their Instagram is not just about come get an eye exam, come get an eye exam. It's like, hey, this is what you can expect when you take your child for a sports physical and you have to have your eyes checked. And it's like, hey, this is how this machine works. And this is how um, we make glasses. This is how our machine works when we're doing your eye exam. This is how we determine how much your how much prescription you need and it's educating and empowering people it's not just come come get an eye exam come buy glasses come do this it's like hey this is a trend for glasses now and oh look such and such celebrity got new glasses and um if you're going outside wear sunglasses like things like that to that are really that still relate to them being an eye doctor but it's also educating people about the importance of taking care of your eyes. Like they even share dietary secrets, like what type of superfoods are known to be good for your eyes. So it's things like that, um, that yes, Mia, it's called Curl Fest. So yes, yeah, so it's things like that that help you to connect with your audience. Because if you think about it as, I know for me, and maybe it doesn't apply to you all, but I know for me, if I'm in a store and somebody's just like, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this, I'm not going to want to buy anything. But if they come and they ask me like about my lifestyle and they would know that high heels are not going to work for me because I'm a mom and I'm always on the go. And they figure out that because I'm always on the go, comfort matters more than aesthetics. And they will understand what types of things to recommend to me. But if somebody says, hey, we got this dress in, um, don't you want to buy it? It's like, no, I don't even wear dresses. Like, I mean, I do when I'm going on a date, but like every day, I don't wear dresses. I, I barely wore dresses to work. Like, it's not my thing. But if they took some time to ask me some questions, like, well, what do you do every day? What's your typical style like, or whatever, then they're more likely to make the sale versus, Ooh, this dress is so pretty. Like, uh, I don't even like that color. So that's how even it can work if you have a retail store where you're going up to your person and you're trying to make that heart connection. Like, what's your lifestyle like? What are you shopping for? What brought you into the store today? Versus, hey, I have this shirt. Don't you want to buy it? It's like, no, that's I don't even wear stuff like that. So when you're thinking about how you should approach your customers, it's more about making a heart connection than it is um, a wallet connection, <laughs> if that's a thing. Because if you think about like your friends, 
Like my friends, I will give them the world. I love my friends that I will give them the world. Like even now, like I help some of my friends and like they have to make me let them pay me because I'm like, you're my friend. I want to see you win. I want to like help you however I can. And that's a heart connection. Once you get that heart connection, people will open up their resources to you. They will open up everything to you versus if it's just a business connection where somebody just gives you their card like, hey, call me if you need me. It's like, I don't even remember, you know how many business cards I have where I don't even remember like where I met them, what we were doing. But there are some people who have never had to give me their card because we made a heart connection. And so that was because we took the time to get to know each other. And so now anytime they need a wholesale t-shirt order, they come to me and I never had to give them my business card because we made that connection beyond what can you do for me? It was more so what can we do for each other? What can I do for you? And then it kind of goes that way. So that's how, that's how content marketing works as well. It's not just what can you do for me, which obviously is you buy my stuff. It's what can I do for you? What, how can I empower you? How can I educate you? How can I help you? And then in turn, you'll make that heart connection to where it's like, whatever you buy, people are going to sell it. That's why people recommend that like when you're about to start selling something, you don't always talk about selling, selling, selling. Like you share videos or whatever. That's why all these people that go viral first and then they have products next. That's why that works because you went viral for being yourself. You went viral for just doing whatever. And then now that you have something after some, after you've already went viral and made that heart connection, now you have something to sell and people are like, I want a piece of it because I like who she is. I like her approach, things like that. So that's why that matters. So step four is you want to create your plan and you also want to create something that you can stick to. And I know for Instagram, you definitely want to try to post at least once a day at the same time because you're trying to trick their algorithm. Personally, I have a love-hate relationship with Instagram. I can go like a week or so without posting on there, but I focus on Facebook because that's where the majority of my sales come from. And I also focus on my email list because that's the high, that gives me the highest return on my investment. And so I think that's why like, I love Instagram because I can see people in real time, but it's like, that's not where my target audience is. My target audience is on Facebook and my target audience is definitely in my email, in my, on my email list because emails give you the highest return on investment over any social media, even with advertisements. And especially if you have something like MailChimp, where if you send less than 2000 emails a month, it's free. So like that's the easiest return on investment ever because even if you sell like $20 through MailChimp, it's like I didn't have to do nothing but send an email. So you want to create a plan and you also want to create something that you can stick to. So if you want to try to tackle all social media platforms, it's totally up to you. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it because it's a lot of work. And also your voice is going to be different on each one because of like you don't want to have to make people have to click to read more on your post. So you want to try to keep your caption like short to the point on Instagram versus Facebook. Even the um, demographics are different, like the age group for people that spend most of their time on Facebook are um, people that are like older millennials versus Instagram and Snapchat is like high school kids and younger millennials. So even if you're, um, depending on your target audience, you might even want to create a plan that only depends on one social media platform. And also while I'm on the point, if you don't have a mail list, you definitely want to do that. You do not want your business to only depend on social media because you do not own that content. Um, I know there was a big thing with Edward Snowden, I think his name was, from the NSA, where everybody started saying like, oh, we don't own our content and we're being monitored or whatever. Regardless of what happens, if, if your business is only on Facebook, if your business, even if your business is only on Etsy or Instagram or somebody else's platform where somebody could come in and just say, eh, I don't like what you're posting. So we're just going to get rid of you. You don't want that. So you definitely want to at least try to have some standalone site, even if it's one of the easier sites like Wix 
or uh, WooCommerce or Squarespace or something, you definitely want to, while you're building your brand, you still want to keep that in your pocket. Like you still want to have your own standalone website because you really could wake up one day. I've poured over the Facebook community standards because one of the groups that's similar to Black Girls Craft was shut down and the we, we were told that it was shut down because of copyright infringement, but they got no warning whatsoever and the group is gone they had like 40,000 members and it's gone and they got no warning and they hadn't collected emails they had they didn't have a website and so it was just like you wake up one day and all your hard work is gone so you don't want to do all of this work to build up your Instagram following or build up your Facebook page only to be at the mercy of another company. You definitely want to at least build your email list and you don't need a website for that. All you need is a link. Facebook even allows you to set it up on your page where you can let people sign up and you can set up MailChimp, you can add it to your Facebook and it's still a free way for people to sign up for your emails. Um, so that's my little tidbit on that. So step five is to grow your audience. And what that means is you want to figure out what hashtags what links, what videos, what um, ideas and concepts your audience will be interested in seeing. And what you should be doing is for every post, you should be getting new followers for every post. So like I said earlier in the broadcast, if you have 3,700 posts and 900 followers, you're doing something wrong. And you wanna make sure, even if you have to go through and archive all 3,700 of those posts and start over, you should archive all 3,700 and start over. Because if I'm looking at your content and I'm like, dang, this girl got 3,700 posts and she get one or two likes on each post and she keep posting, to me that means you're not connecting with your audience. And especially if you have, I think the, in, the average engagement is something like three to 5%, which when you factor in the algorithms or whatever, if you have like 900 followers, you should at least get like nine likes or something on your post. And if you're not getting constant engagement, if you're not getting any comments or anything like that, that means it's time to change your approach because you're posting stuff that your audience doesn't care about. Like I can't really sugarcoat that. That's pretty much what that is. All right, so that's pretty much it for content marketing. So just to recap, what you want to do in order to get started is you want to create a content planner. I do have my content marketing workbook. It's on my website at www. I don't broke the pen. <laughs> www.rakisha.com. It is called the content marketing workbook. It should be on my homepage. And I just posted the coupon um, hold on. Let me double check it just to make sure. All right. So it, the coupon has been updated. It is for $5 off. All right, it is for $5 off of the content marketing workbook. And right now the workbook is $26.99. Um, once I sell 50 copies, which I don't have that many to go. So once I sell 50 copies, I'm gonna make it full price, which is going to be $45.99. Um, you can only use the coupon code once because it's a, you can get either the digital copy or a print copy, which if you get the print copy, then it will include um, the digital version as well. The digital version does have editable PDFs. So if you want to just download it and just use it on your computer, I know everyone doesn't like to print stuff. Um, please consider the environment. Um, so if you have, if you just want to use it on your computer, you can definitely do that and uh, just click the PDF and just go from there. Um, but that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna, since I was like in my own little world doing the broadcast, I'm gonna take a few moments and see if we have any questions. 
Um, so Mia, oh, the event was Curl Fest in Brooklyn. Yeah, that's what it was called. I, I hesitated to call it Curl Fest because the other one that I went to in Fort Lauderdale was called Curl Fest, but I know it wasn't the same thing because that one is inside in Fort Lauderdale, but the one in Brooklyn is like a huge outdoor event. Like it's like um, Afro punk style, like everyone really goes all out with the hairstyles or whatever. But I wanted to call it Curl Fest, but I figured since the other one is called Curl Fest, it had to be a different name. And I know it's different people too. So that's why I hesitated, but I should have just followed my instinct. All right. So, uh, yeah. So Pamela says she wanted to pull back from Facebook. Yeah. So that's pretty much why, because you don't want to give anybody the power to have um, that much control. So that's also why, like for our Black Girls Craft Group, we started to collect emails because once that other craft group was shut down, the woman was like, well, we have no way to communicate, even communicate with people to tell them what happened. So everybody just woke up one day and I don't know about y'all, but you wake up, you go to your favorite groups, you go to your favorite pages and it's gone and you don't have a way to contact the, the administrators or whatever. And the administrators don't have a way to contact the members. And it's like, all you did is gone down the drain now because somebody reported you all this do y'all know all these permit patty people all these uh like all those people they will get upset with you and try to report your stuff because they don't want to see you win because you did something to piss them off people will try to get you fired from your job people will do whatever you do not want to give somebody that kind of control over your business because the only place you sell is on facebook and your facebook page gets shut down what are you going to do you don't have any other options. So you always want to make sure that you have an alternative. Even when I teach people about Etsy, I'll always tell them, you want to have something else other than Etsy. And I love Etsy. Like Etsy was my first ever website. I thought I was going to be fancy and like use my custom domain name and then like port it over to Etsy. But still, you still want to have a, a, a custom domain name because or a custom website because even when I first got on Etsy, it was so many posts in the forum where people were like, Oh my gosh, I woke up this morning and my Etsy shop is gone. Imagine if you left your job because your Etsy shop started making six figures and then you wake up one morning and it's just gone. And you're like on the phone with Etsy and, and before then you can only request a call for them. I know they made some changes before and I talked about it on our blog, but before that, like it, everything was different and you could really wake up one day and your Etsy shop could be gone. You could wake up one day, your Facebook page is gone. Your, your Instagram can be gone. And if that's the only way that you sell, that's the only way that you talk to your customers, what are you going to do? So for people that are in the Black Girls Craft group that I admin, that's the reason why we ask for y'all's emails. Because right now, one of the craft groups is that is like nearing 90,000, which I'm pretty sure will get to 90 by... Um, the first week in August. And then uh, we just started another business group and that's at like 150 or something, which I'm pretty sure we'll get into the thousands very soon once everybody realizes that we severed ties with the old group. But we don't want to get anything where we're totally dependent on Facebook. We never want to do that. It's, it's honestly like not to sugarcoat it. It's just not smart. That's it. So, um, yeah, so if we, if they just oh low set if they just decide to shut all social media sites down, you have other ways to connect with your clients. Exactly. Like what I learned from my mentor is you can it's okay to go old school. Like there are some people who don't have social media and all they do is events. They go around and they do very well for themselves. They don't post not nothing on social media. They have an email. They might have a website if you're lucky. But I know some people, especially around here, because I like to go to farmer's markets. I'm like, where can I follow y'all? They're like, um, we go to all the farmer's markets in Metro Atlanta. That's how you can find us. That's it. And their lines will be wrapped around the door like Chick-fil-A. So it's really okay if you take the low-tech approach to marketing. I The whole concept of this is for people that are into digital marketing and social media marketing. It's great. I love it. It can make you good money. Um, but at the same time, I don't want this to be the only way that anyone gets their business's message out there. So um yeah so hi Darina hi Carla 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it. This will be on a replay, so I will leave it up for as long as Facebook leaves my page up. <laughs> I hope they don't watch this and be like, oh, is she throwing shade? <laughs> We gonna shut her down and, and teach her a lesson. So <laughs> y'all better watch it, just in case Facebook get pissed at me and try to shut me down. But if anybody has any questions, you can find. I'm taking an Instagram break, like I said, but you can find me on here on Facebook. You can email me. Um, I have two businesses, so you can email me at buycasewithlove at gmail .com or info at rakisha .com. You can check my website rakisha .com or buycasewithlove .com. So that's it. Thank you all for joining me. Have a good Saturday. It's Saturday and it's nice. Nice weather today. <laughs>